It's easy to duplicate your slides, make some differences on the slide objects on the duplicated slide and then add the morph transition. And PowerPoint creates a tween effect based on the differences between the two slides. You can keep duplicating slides and making small changes in these duplicated slides and morph the transition effect takes care of the smooth movements. That's the basic morph technique, which we have already explored in various tutorials. In this tutorial, we'll learn further. If you want to learn basic morph techniques, I'll leave links to the introduction tutorials in the description below. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching these videos on my site, then again, there are links to those tutorials in the first paragraph. Now let's look at how you can take two existing slides that are different. In fact, let us begin from scratch and create two slides. On the first of these slides, we will go ahead and place a square. So we go to the home tab and go to the shapes gallery and choose the rectangle option. And to draw a square, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the shift key and then draw the square. As you can see, it constrains the height and width ratios. Similarly, on the second slide, I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm going to take the oval option and again, I'm going to press the shift key so that the height and the width is constrained in the exact proportion to each other. So now I have a square on one slide and I have a circle on the other slide. Let me now go ahead to slide sort of view. I don't need these first two slides. Let me delete them. I want to select both these slides. So I'm going to press Ctrl A to select both the slides in slide sort of view. If you're using a Mac, you will use a similar Command A keyboard shortcut. Next, you will access the Transitions tab of the ribbon. Okay. And then you will select the Morph Transition Effect in the Transitions Gallery. It is already selected here. What happens when you click on this option here? It at applies a morph transition effect to both the slides since both of them are selected. Let us now press this morph transition effect by playing the slides in slideshow view. Let us go and play it out now. So this is our squared slide and now we go to the next slide. So it did really the square did not morph into the circle as we wanted, right? Why did it not happen? Let's go and find out. Why doesn't a successful morph take place between the square and the circle? That's because where the square has four points, that is the four corners, the circle has none. Circle doesn't have any corner. Okay, so the morph transition effect does not know where to begin the transition from and where to end. Let's face it, we did not duplicate slides like we have done in the past tutorials. So PowerPoint cannot intelligently guess our intentions. And uh, you may have, we have only one shape on the slide, each slide here, but you may have four, five, seven shapes and on slide number one and 10 on the other. So PowerPoint wouldn't even know in that case to transition from which shape to the other. Fortunately, we can remedy the situation by using exclamation named objects. Let's repeat it again exclamation named objects. So what are exclamation named objects? Hold on to these thoughts and we'll explain more later in this tutorial. The first slide with the square is now our active slide. Let us access the home tab of the ribbon and select the select button. I know it sounds strange saying select select okay but we select the select button and this brings up a drop down menu with some options in those options you choose the last option that says selection pane so you bring up the selection pane on the right side of the powerpoint interface so i can just close it again and this time i'm going to get a selection pane with a keyboard shortcut which is alt f10 you press alt f10 once to get the selection pane and you press alt f10 another time to close that selection pane so it's a toggle option now let's select the square in the selection pane, which says rectangle. And you can see the name of this is now editable. I can go and type over it with something else if I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a new name. I'm going to begin with two exclamation marks. And then I'm going to say morph shape 01. And I'm going to end with two exclamation marks. Okay, and let me hit the enter key to finalize the name. So next, what I'm going to do is similarly, I'm going to go to the second slide, select the circle, 
go to the selection pane, double click here, type in two quotation marks, exclamation marks, and type in the same name that I typed in the previous slide. So this tells PowerPoint that both the shapes have the same name. And we are done. Make sure that you use the same name and also make sure that you add two exclamation marks before the name and two exclamation arms marks after the name. Now let us test the morph transition effect by playing the slides in slideshow view. You will notice that the square will morph amazingly well into the circle. Let's go and check it now. So do you see that? Wasn't it very smooth? Let me go and hit the back arrows to go back to the square and again the front arrow. So as you can see, the transition is super smooth. The square to circle morph was simple to easy. But imagine the amazing stuff you can do by naming your objects with the exclamation marks, letting PowerPoint know the objects you want to be morphed. This simple trick can help you create animations that never seemed possible in PowerPoint before. So do play with this trick. To learn more about such tricks, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and have an awesome day. Explore more concepts at InDesign.com InDesign Make better presentations Fast